and something, some experiences in my life I feel like I should share because they can, they can help you. I gave a talk in Kuwait. I finished my talk, big security thing, you can't talk to people, they don't let you talk to people. So I snuck around the other side of the masjid and talked to people on the street. Right? And this lady came up to me and said, Ahi, you need to tell people, he, she had a book, you need to tell people that they have to learn the correct aqidah. And this is the book of the correct aqidah. And you need to teach this book. So people have the right uluhiyah and rububiyah and asmal sifat because people do a lot of shirk because they don't have the right what? Aqidah. I was like, thank you. What book is this? Is this Quran? Is this surah? No, no, no. This is a book of this, this, this chapters and these, these, these deviations that people have and you know what people consider, you know, shirk and this and that and the other and it protects people from making these kinds of mistakes. I was like, well, this is really complicated. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to study Islam. I'm scared right now. I feel like I might be a mushrik. She's like, Akhi, this is really important. You don't know this stuff? I was like, no, I don't know it. Don't you want to know it? I said, no, I don't want to know it either. But don't you want to have the perfect, the right aqidah? I was like, yeah, I do. Uh, but, so maybe I should find out where Allah talks about aqidah in the Quran. Let me find the ayah of aqidah. Uh, there isn't one. Because the word aqidah doesn't exist in the Quran. If that word was that important, it would be where? So I, I have this really deviant idea, I'll tell you. It's a really crazy idea. I think the things Allah talks about are more important. I know that sounds blasphemous. <laughs> and then I I know this is really messed up. I think nobody taught iman, not aqidah, because aqidah is not used in the Quran. What's used in the Quran? Nobody taught iman better than Ibrahim alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam. Uh, I think they're pretty, I think they're better than any scholar at teaching even Prophets, my nation, follow the prophets. prophets, the ones who've been sent. And I, when I study Ibrahim alayhi salam, he just says the sun can't be God, the moon can't be God, the star can't be God, I turn my face towards the one who made everything. That doesn't seem so complicated. What you told me about these categories and these subheadings, and that was really hard. But when the prophets talk in their greatest, and I also think there is no better book than the Quran. Like if people should know a book, if there was one book they should know, it should be the Quran. I know that sounds crazy. But I think it has a supreme author. And in that book, when he decides to teach you about faith, he doesn't get philosophical, he doesn't get abstract, he doesn't discuss deviant concepts, he doesn't discuss... He's not interested in any of it. He just says, straightforward, something that a poet can understand, something a philosopher can understand, something a farmer can understand, something a, you know, a programmer can understand, something me, I can understand, it's easy. Something any human being can understand. Why do we have to complicate this terminology? Why do we have to complicate this conversation? When Allah's messengers, all of them, one of their great sunan, one of their great legacies is Al-Balaghul Mubin. They, they communicate in a way that gets to your heart and they just separate truth from falsehood. That's all they do. It's simple. It's not complicated. You know what we've done, right? We've turned the conversation about Islam into conversations about books written by people about Islam. Those books have become Islam. And the only book that doesn't get its attention anymore is what? It's Quran. That's kind of a tragedy. I'm not saying those books aren't important. But there's a difference between primary and secondary, you understand? And not, then we've, done, we've done a real, the shaitan's done this one. This is so good at this. I'm impressed, shaitan. You know what he's done? Those books you should read. Allah's book is for the scholars. Read the books of the scholars. But don't read the book of Allah because that is for the scholars. Because when it says hudal lil nas, what it really means is hudal lil ulama. Because it's complicated. Quran is very complicated. You can't understand. Yaar, insan? Allah de bande. Quran is complicated. Quran is complicated. Jinns hear Quran and become Muslim. 
but passing by, they hear Quran and they, they become Muslim. And then they speak because they were so inspired. And Allah puts that in the Quran. And to you, Quran is complicated. Where did they get their degree before they speak about Quran? Where did they graduate from, these jinn? They can comment on the Quran, astaghfirullah What kind of shaitan? <laughs> He's a jinn, not a shaitan. <laughs> you know? And then we're reading their speeches. We love distancing people from the word of Allah. Yes, I acknowledge. There's the possibility of you misinterpreting or coming to the wrong conclusion. But the journey of learning, so long as it's sincere, and you go to people who know better than you, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask people who do more remembrance than you do, who try to memorize, who try to study. If you yourself don't know, that is the journey of every human being. Why block access from people? There's no reason to do that. This messenger, this man should have said, there are prophets speaking, I should keep my mouth shut. The, the biggest ulama of this ummah are prophets. There, there's three of them. What is my role to speak? But he understands I have to speak because messengers are being rejected. Maybe they'll listen to me because I'm not a messenger. Maybe I, if I don't come from the official position, maybe I'll come from a different angle. Maybe Allah will accept that. He's not coming as competition to messengers.